Hello. And welcome to Boomtown. I'm going to make a quick change here. Boom. Hello. Let me turn this down a little bit. Hello and welcome to another episode of Omtown. Today is January 24th, 2022. And I'm racing to catch up as usual. It's six o'clock on the East Coast. And I'm going to go through a selection of stories that my aggregator has acquired in the last 24 hours. I do this via a website um, that I created called Oomtown, for which you can become a citizen. Just go over to Oomtown.com, sign in, and uh, you are automatically a citizen of Oomtown. You can read the news, engage in discussion in the uh, discussion board forum or discussion group forums. And, um, kind of looks like this, uh, hometown aggregates news into six categories. Uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is highlighting a group or a category, um, each day. If you end up in my chat, and uh, you have an, a better idea of how to go about this, that would be great. You can send me a message. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm i getting so much news that I think that I can probably spend an hour talking about one category. So hometown grabs all of the news, filters it into these six categories um, within which there are going to be shows. Right now, that's just me. I'm looking for hosts and co-hosts. So if you're interested, feel free to drop me a note there as well. Let me know which show you are interested in. We can have a chat and work out the minutia. These six categories are by no means the limit. I could add more to this, but right now we're just sticking to these six. And then all of these are groups which are more focused. So create news, education, entertainment, social, and technology. Um, I've made a selection of some news, uh, that has been aggregated, like I said, at the beginning of this. Uh, so let, let's get into it. This first article is, uh, is from variety. And like I've mentioned in previous, uh, episodes, I don't really plan my, my show, I, I would prefer to kind of riff off of the news and, and riff off of chat. Uh, if anybody shows up in chat, I've been doing this for less than a month uh, and I'm looking for more people to follow and to show up in chat. I hope that I have a compelling uh, hour of news and discussion uh, coming, you know, over the, the days and weeks and, and months. Um, but 20 days into it, 24 days into it. Um, this is the process. So, um, meatloaf's streams jumped by 4,650% following, uh, death and sales see an even bigger bump. So for whatever reason, like most things, you miss it when it's gone. And in this instance, the, what grabbed me was the, the little snippet that my aggregator saw, which was refrain from, from consuming meatloaf's music following his death. The singers fans wouldn't do anything for grief, but they would do anything for grief, but they wouldn't do that. So. A big spike album sales went up 18,000% individual digital tracks rose a whopping 34,000. Well, I don't know how many would normally be sold, 
but 34,000 is still a pretty big bump. So what do you think? Are you going to go consume some meatloaf? Maybe that's too soon. Next story is uh, from Continuity Report. That's where it was aggregated to. Um, the source of it is Variety as well. Lawrence Fishburn, uh, Daniel Day Kim, a star alongside Kerry Washington in Audible's Prophecy podcast drama series. Uh, I really like Audible. I like the idea of uh, drama auto, um, stories, right? Um, I like the atmosphere. I like really good voice acting. Um, one of the last books that I purchased through Audible was a Harry Potter book. And I wanted to hear, well, I wanted to hear an authentic um, Harry Potter book read, right? Like a, a, a full story with environmentals and, and different voice acting. A dr I want it dramatized, kind of like the movies, but word for word of the book. And I ended up getting something that was just horrible. I didn't like the way that um, words were being pronounced and blah, blah, blah. I, I had mentioned it in a previous um, episode, but if I, I haven't heard anything, any snippets or anything from prophecy, I'm not sure um, what it is just yet in terms of um, the quality of it. But if it's going to have these three in it, I think it'll be um, pretty good. So I'm going to go check it out. I just didn't get a chance. I'm, I'm hoping that there's some um, snippets somewhere that I can uh, hear it. So this one is actually pretty new to me. Very new to me. Uh, because I hadn't heard anything about it. I don't think. I think I had heard something about prophecy, but I'm not sure what the context was anymore. Um, but let's keep on going with this. So this next article is um, aggregated into Mobile. And again, it's a, a show. It talks about um, kind of hyper-local news events. Um, it was supposed to be for a, an app called Mobile, but the mobile mob where people could um, stream news, kind of like TikTok, but actually just news, not, not little video snippets. At any rate, um, yesterday I spoke about, um, oh, sorry. This, this article was published at, on newyorktimes.com. And so I'll click the link. It'll take you there. And, uh, this, it seemed really absurd at the time. Uh, knowing more about it now, I'd say that it's even more absurd than you think. <laughs> um, people knew that these guys, these these employees were leaving um, Theta Care and they were going to Ascension. Uh, essentially, it was about salary and benefits. Uh, Theta Care, instead of resolving it that way, in a business-minded sense, they actually filed a lawsuit and... Um, stymieing the ability to start work today at Ascension for these employees. Um, actually, yeah, in, in some sense, I understand why a judge would do this, but in this sense, I think it's absurd. Um, Theta care is not necessarily, you know, a slouch in being able to, uh, solve their employment problems. They're pretty big from my understanding. Um, and basically there was a lot of verbiage thrown around saying that they were being poached or something else. Uh, I, I don't quite get it because we live in an at will employment environment across the United States. You can be fired or quit for any reason or no reason, uh, least of which would be having a reason, <laughs> 
um, such as not getting paid what you think you deserve. And that's really what it comes down to. If I demand payment, uh, uh, an increase in salary and an employer says, no, I have two options. Live with it and, and stay where I am with the lower salary or go find another job. Well, in this case, they transferred over to Ascension and quit uh, Theta Care. And Theta Care filed for an injunction to have them not be able to quit. <laughs> Does it sound absurd? Yes. Was it absurd? Yes. Was the response from the uh, Ascension uh, lawyers spectacular? Oh, yes. It was quite entertaining to read this. Um, and you can too. So I would urge you to go over to the New York Times and read this article, Judge Lifts Order Preventing Wisconsin Hospital Workers from Starting New Jobs. I probably have not heard of anything quite this absurd in relation to somebody quitting. I, I have seen people plop down an envelope saying that they resign and being told, no, you can't. That doesn't stop you from walking out the door. And it certainly doesn't stop you from going and getting a job somewhere else. But a court saying you're not allowed to be hired by the people that offered you a job is pretty absurd. So this next article is actually from Lawnard. It, that's where it was um, put into uh, the group Law Nerd on Ometown, but its source is above the law. So like all of my news, there's just a little bit that's um, taken from uh, the source so that you can get an idea, basically a headline and a little tiny snippet. When you click the link, you get taken to the article and then you can read all about it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing reading it, obviously. Um, that's not the purpose of this, um, show, but law school tells six students they should go to the back of the classroom. This too is one of those weird things that I, I don't think that it makes any sense to kind of <laughs> provide this as a solution. If you have. COVID, if you are sick, putting you in the back of a room doesn't resolve this in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it may be more conducive to spreading a cold because depending on where the air conditioning is, it could be blowing your exhaust all over the place. I just don't get it. Um, and there isn't anything really standing out in this other than the air has been spicy with the vid for the last two years. None of this is new. And even if the school doesn't want to renew its Zoom subscription, this is weird. This has to be something else. <laughs> anyway, did the administration as a whole just decide to not hire any teachers who have an ADA specialty? Hmm. This is weird. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what this article is really getting at. And that's all there is to it. Hmm. So I might have to root around and see if I can find another source for this. This is one of those articles where I clicked on it because of the headline and it doesn't really say much. I mean, I think it's all based on the fact that there, it's a, a TikTok video. Um, yeah, weird. Anyway, let's continue on. Um, so here's another article. Uh, this one is from the Hill. It's been put into the group mobile. Whoopi Goldberg rips Bill Maher over COVID-19 remarks. Quote, how dare you be so flippant? When you click on the link, just like usual, you'll get taken over to the 
um, article and or the video if it's available. Um, and I watched some of um, Bill Maher's interactions regarding uh, COVID. And it, to me, it sounds like he just doesn't really you know, care. Um, to me, I think being flippant about COVID is rather sociopathic. Um, it, it's rather, I, well, I didn't get it, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Let me see if I can hold this aside. I, for whatever reason, some websites are messing with my, um, layout. Well, at any rate, the, um, this weird sociopathy is akin to got mine, screw you. And so as long as the person isn't directly impacted by it, it seems like it just doesn't matter. You know, it's a cold, wash your hands, that kind of a thing. But we're looking at almost 900,000 people dying because of COVID. I think we're at 850. In fact, let me, let me pull up the current stat. I think that we are okay. So 866,000 people that's right in between uh, North and South Dakota in terms of the population of a state dying. Okay. So it would be the 47th state. I think we could call it in terms of the number of people who have died due to COVID in two years. So this isn't the flu. This isn't wash your hands. Everybody's going to be okay. This is get the vaccine, wear a mask. Even if you have the vaccine, three shots or two shots, it doesn't matter. Wear a mask, not just for you, but for everybody else around you. That's my opinion. But my opinion is founded in understanding science and, and forensics and the, the fact that things transfer, you can't sit in your car with light shining into your car and talk without being able to witness little micro particles emanating off of your face because you are spitting little water droplets, water droplets all the time. Moisture is being pushed out of your nose all the time. That's why you wear a mask over your nose and over your mouth. So it traps it and keeps it from being pushed off onto other people. No, it's not going to hot box your face with virus. The little particles get trapped inside the fabric. That's how it works. Anyway, without getting higher on my soapbox, um, Bill Maher was rather flippant about it. He didn't seem to, um, care that, you know, nine, almost 900,000 people. Yeah. Okay. We're 34,000 people away from 900,000 people at any rate. It isn't, it isn't a mystery in higher density places. There's more spread because there's more people. Okay. That's how it spreads from person to person. If you're out in the open somewhere away from everybody else, you don't need to wear a mask and lower population count, lower population density means that there's going to be fewer, um, vehicles for it to spread. So they go into more on, uh, on the site. But one thing that I wanted to draw attention to is the fact that Whoopi Goldberg isn't the subject matter expert. Bill Maher isn't the subject matter expert. Don't take your subject matter uh, and apply it to movie stars or personalities. Take your subject matter experts and listen to them. You know, Fauci is the subject matter expert. Whoopi Goldberg is a movie star. 
Bill Maher is a, a personality who just, and a comedian, um, who, you know, pumps their own remarks. It's basically doing what I do, except that he's been doing it longer. I've been doing it for 24 days. And, you know, I, I'm not irrational about, <laughs> um, the, the information that I'm, uh, reading and seeing and, and you go to the hospital and you can see sick people and it's not sick people with a cold, it's sick people with COVID and they're actually isolated from the rest of the population because it spreads so horribly quick and is deadly. So they're not going to be sitting in the hallways, but you know, if you talk to somebody that works in the field, yeah, there's a, a ton of people that are still sick more than a ton. If you add up all the weight, <clears throat> sorry, maybe too soon. Anyway, a lot of this stuff just kind of wears on you and sure you get burnt out, but for crying out loud, just wear a mask, get vaccinated. If you have other issue, health issues, and it prevents you from getting the vaccine, then talk to your doctor. They may be, maybe one of the vaccines that'll work. And, um, if not, then wear an N95 mask. So another article under mobile under the hood, how environment and genomes interact in plant development. Um, iOS state university scientists have harnessed, uh, data analytics to look quote, under the hood of the mechanisms that determine how genetics and changing environmental conditions interact during crucial development stages of plants. Um, this is a fizz.org article. And the more we learn about any genetics will lead to greater understanding of human genetics. So if we can, find out why environmental conditions impact the genetics of something like a plant. We can do it, um, safely there and then leverage that understanding with humans. I mean, we know that depending on what you feed a plant, the result is a different level of nutrition or even different growing mechanics. Um, but getting a deeper understanding of the mechanisms at play, uh, will eventually lead to greater understanding of the human condition, uh, without doing some bizarrely unethical stuff. And by bizarrely, I mean, the unethical stuff is bizarre, which has been done in the past, but we don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Hopefully, but we don't do that kind of stuff because we don't let people forget that this stuff has happened in the past, this abusive stuff. Um, I just don't want to get into it in, 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 in this <laughs> show. Um, but if we do end up talking about it, if you come back and, and you are interested in talking about it, um, there is, there have been events that. Uh, can make your skin crawl. So hopefully we learn something, um, revolutionary about how the environment and the genome interacts in our development, not just plants. So this is another, uh, this is an article that was placed in stock marketeers, but its source is market watch. And it says investors have written off the fed put, but it might not take much to help put a floor under risk sentiment. Um, says one market economist. So I'm gonna click this link. It takes you to, um, market watch with stocks in new year stumble. 
where's the Fed put? Why policymakers aren't seen rushing to rescue. And the thing that caught my attention was that it was a, this is actually, I think this has actually changed since I first um, looked at it because it says um, with Dow in free fall, will reserve stop the bleeding? Will the Fed reserve stop the bleeding? But when you click the link, they have changed what that headline is. And I find that interesting because when I first read this article, it was talking about that free fall. It literally had stuff referencing the free fall. Um, but I did not see a Dow decline at the end of the day. It was up a hundred points during the day. It dropped a thousand points, but that is, I wouldn't say standard, but it is always possible. A thousand points is almost nothing when you've got, you know, a, a Dow that is volatile. Let's just say that. So the stock market is volatile and, uh, there are uncertain conditions right now. So, uh, people are taking advantage of the, uh, risk aversion, risk aversion. And, um, that's, that's just how the stock market is. But year over year, the Dow is actually up still. So of course, I think the stock market is a difficult thing to exist in. Uh, I'll just put it to you that like that. If you try and trade regularly and you don't have vast amounts of money that you can do it with, it's going to be really hard to, to make some money. It's better to just invest it in something stable and let it slowly grow over decades of existence. And then when you're ready to retire, just dump it all, not necessarily dump it all, but you know, you can survive off of it. Okay. Let's just keep going. Um, I haven't seen this, um, bento stack review, Japanese inspired accessory storage. I thought that just this was, um, an interesting title. It's from Apple insider. And I thought it was, I, I figured it was going to be having to do with bento boxes, uh, bento stack. Right. So, um, I think it's, I think any a storage thing is, uh, fun. So I've always loved office supplies and, um, pens and different types of paper and, uh, storage things. Uh, right now I've got uh, 12 storage boxes behind me, at, like right, right there, right, right there are, are 12 storage boxes for stuff. Um, in, in my office that I need to relocate. Um, but these are neat looking little boxes. Uh, what's interesting about this is I can 3d print all of these things, um, with relative ease and just as durable, I would say, um, even little clips and, and separators and everything a, a person can just 3d print them. I think everybody should get a 3d printer and just be able to mash a button and let it print and mash another button and let it print. Um, now there's even some 3d printers that have like a little treadmill device so that it can print uh, continuously. And the, when the piece is done, it just falls off the edge. <laughs> into a bin, you could basically have a production line, a mini manufacturing line, but this is just like a bento box. So bento stack, uh, nice colors. You can do that with a 3d printer. There's really nothing strategically advantageous other than uh, you can purchase it, but they're 40 bucks. Um, at least with a 3d printer, you can custom make your colors and, uh, even the design, but still I like the design.
we'll let that just sit right there. Um, another article pulled into Mobile. A new study calls into question the importance of meat eating in shaping our evolution. Uh, this too is a fizz.org article. If you've ever wondered if um, meat played a role, uh, <laughs> this evolutionary transition towards human-like traits is often linked to a major dietary shift involving greater meat consumption. A new study published today in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences calls into question the primacy of meat eating in early human evolution. So what do you think? Do you think meat made a difference in our evolution? Um, so this says here at the very end of this first paragraph, effectively skewing the evidence in favor of the meat made us human hypothesis, right? So while archeological archeo evidence for meat eating increases dramatically after the appearance, the appearance of Homo erectus, the study authors argue that this increase can largely be explained by greater research attention on that time period effectively skewing it. So, you know, there, obviously there are people out there that are doing the re the fundamental research on this. Um, but I suppose finding more evidence about meat eating over uh, the historical record, if your objective is to just find whatever is out there. Um, that's one thing, but if there's a lot of focus and attention on looking, and this is something that I have actually seen quite a bit of on archeology span shows, um, is that they look for, um, food and you're going to find bones before you find, um, you know, corn or, or vegetables or something like that, because it, it decomposes faster and it doesn't, it doesn't stabilize in the ground. It just, it, it, it breaks down entirely. Um, so you'll never find, at least I don't recall, um, seeing any shows that say, well, you know, we found a bunch of fruit sitting in a container. Um, but you'll find bones. In fact, that's, uh, that's what they look for. They look for human and animal bones, um, not, fruits and vegetables because if a fruit is in the ground and it has seeds, it will turn into a tree. Not every tree is, uh, you know, whatever it might be, it'll decompose or it'll grow into another one if it has seeds and you can't discern, you know, oh, well, <laughs> that was actually buried there by uh, Homo erectus millions of years ago. That you'll always find bones and you'll find bones that have marks on it. Like this one here, 1.5 million year old fossil bones with cut marks, um, found in Kenya. Sure. You're not going to find a tomato. That's all cut up. What do you think of that? Let me know in chat, come back to my show, uh, tomorrow at uh, six o'clock. I'm still here right now until seven. Um, and I'll continue to go over these news bits that I've already selected. Um, here's one that's really impressive. And I, I wish that there was more, uh, competition in GPU production, um, because even, you know, old 1080, uh, TIs and, and my card for instance, is basically $1,200 trying to get a 30, uh, 70, 30, 80, 30, 90 is, uh, basically the same price as an entire PC. Uh, and I'm not talking about cheap PC. I'm talking about high end PC. It's bananas that, uh, GPUs are so darn expensive, um, because people basically buy them immediately. And, uh, then they're either scalping them somewhere for twice the price. Um, or I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I know that Bitcoin mining and stuff like that, but ASICs are better for Bitcoin mining. And th those prices are off the hook. 
I just don't. Come on, keep producing. But I talked about why production is down um, yesterday as well. And, and that's because supposedly there's still a coronavirus uh, issues in production. Yet the production, the countries that it's being produced in, depending on which one you talk to, says that they've got a bead on it. I, almost two years ago, they said it. and But then I find news saying that, no, they don't have a bead on it. So what's really going on? Why is production really down? Um, you know, obviously, I think that it's, uh, I guess it wouldn't be obvious, but I think that COVID is still impacting production and we have constrained um, producers and we have constrained delivery locations. Like there are not a robust number of ports that boats can go to and deliver their goods. Um, uh, we've basically buttered our bread and now we've got to sleep in it, right? Yes, I know what I said. Anyway, if Intel GPUs are at the same speeds of 3070 TIs, Sign me up. You know, I don't care if it's a, a a laptop solution, if it is a laptop solution. So this is at, over at Ars Technica. I'll click the link. Um, the Intel Arc. So if if I if this can get up and running, <laughs> maybe in the in the uh, Ohio, uh, chip fab that's, or there's at least two of them, right? Two chip fabs that are supposed to come online in 2025. Maybe these can be produced there. That would be awesome. Um, but I will, you know, I will go and request some custom liquid cooling solution and put this in a doggone desktop. I don't care if it's for a laptop, just find me some solder and I'll just super glue it in with a paper clip and some bubble gum. I don't, I don't know. I just, I need a better GPU. I want ray tracing. Um, and it changes everything, uh, when it comes to computer, uh, graphics. I mean, it's like night and day. Anyway, latest Intel arc GPU leaks. 3070 TI-ish. Um, I've always referred to it as TI, but I thought I heard in a newscast that it's called TI, not TI. Anyway, I mean, it would make sense to just be called TI because it's always just TI, TI. Anyway, five different options for, uh, for laptops. Intel stab at the dedicated GPU market still looks promising. Oh yes. Sign me up, get more GPUs out there and build some competition, build some production, get those uh, GPUs out there. So this next article is something that I've always been curious about. Um, this is Omicron. So how Omicron's mutations allow it to thrive. 13 of Omicron's mutations should have hurt the variants chances of survival. Instead, they're working um, to make it thrive. So this article is from New York Times. And I'm really interested in the new variant and the difference between the, the, the Omicron version and Delta. Um, Omicron is kind of a flash in the pan, right? It, it's not as deadly, but it will still hurt. Um, it still does damage to the lungs and heart and brain. And I'm not sure about brain. There's a bunch of stuff that it impacts, um, not just the lungs, but a colorized scanning electron micrograph of a cell infected with a coronavirus. Sar SARS CoV 2 evolution took an unexpected turn in uh, late 2020 when new variants began emerging. There are always variants that spawn from the original, and it's usually this genetic wobble that 
either makes a virus more deadly, it's it's evolution, but fast tracked. And the strongest will survive. Well, Omicron isn't necessarily the strongest because it's dying. Um, maybe. You don't know. Really. <laughs> it's another wave, um, but it could... The, that genetic wobble could lead to another variant from Omicron. I believe there already are variants of Omicron, um, even of Omicron as it's dying out. The, the successor is waiting in the shadow to kind of bloom. As nurses and doctors struggle with a record-breaking wave of Omicron cases, evolutionary biologists are engaged in a struggle of their own, figuring out how this world-dominating variant came to be. And it seems pretty simple to me. There's little, little tweaks to the genetic code, and then one person infects another person, and so on and so forth, and they've found that uh, Omicron is infecting uh, rats. You end up with the bubonic plague because the fleas drink the blood of the rat and then the fleas bite the humans. And then, you know, this is how you end up with the thing out there in the middle of an ice pack in um, the Antarctic. I don't know. I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall. Anyway, um, normally when things have a ton of mutations, it leads to it just collapsing under its own inability to attach and, and infect. Um, but apparently this is, you know, making it work. Uh, it's just not as deadly. Let's hope that it just all flames out here in 2022. But go over to the New York times and do a search for Omicron's radical evolution. And it is evolution. It's just fast tracked. It's kind of like um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. The certain things have the ability to evolve faster. Um, there's we use flies for that kind of stuff. Not not we use fruit flies for that as well because they breed so fast and and the genetics changes so quickly. Um, euphoria dominates Twitter con uh, conversation for third week in a row. Um, this is an article from variety. So if you are interested in that show, it is still, um, as popular as ever. Book of Boba Fett was fun. Um, I haven't watched Moon Knight. Yeah. So if you've watched Euphoria and you want to talk about it in chat, let me know because I haven't really watched it. And uh, maybe you can tell me something about it. Come on back to my show tomorrow. Uh, something that's really neat is that James, the James Webb telescope has landed in its destination and uh, they have some um, video. So we'll go visit the source and that's New York times. So it reached, reached its destination. It had been unfurling things and and uh, getting ready to be in its position. Ten billion dollar telescope still needed to power through the first leg of its setup phase. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm hoping some really spectacular pictures and hopefully video um, come out of it. The, the last thing that I thought was really, really exciting was um, video of um, stars being 
pull basically orbiting a black hole and you can't see the black hole. It's just uh, an empty spot in the video. It's just amazing to watch. Um, and now the James Webb telescope will be, um, looking way past what has already been found. Um, yep. Yeah, I hope we look way deeper into uh, our past and find out, um, what's going on out there. Just how vast is space? Yeah, we know it's pretty big. Twitter suspends Wordle ruining bot. Um, Wordlinator was the, the bot and Twitter banned it. A bot that replied to people's Wordle posts with rude messages that include spoilers for the next day's game. To me, it just seems like it's just a, a troll account. Just leave it alone. Um, the fact that they took action on it uh, seems odd because they they won't take action against some things. They'll take actions against other things. Uh, I just, I don't get it. Um, but if, if trolling somebody is a, a bannable offense, there's a whole lot of bans that need to be thrown out. But this is an article from The Verge. If you click the link, you'll get taken there and you can read more about it there. Um, move into a little bit more serious of a article. Uh, Pentagon puts 8,500 troops on high alert amid Ukraine tensions. Yes, of course. Um, I read recently that there are a large portion of people who say that the U.S. should um, embrace, not embrace, should change its attitude about Russia. All I can say is I think that whatever it was that was assessed had to have been gamed. Um, but I mean, these countries are autonomous. There's no reason for anybody to take over Ukraine and this isn't just a vacation. Uh, I remember the eighties and nineties and the balkanization of the region and, uh, interacted with people who came from that region and it was horrible, uh, fighting all the time, lots of death, destruction. Um, eh, the region was destabilized and it's finally stable and now it's being destabilized again um, with threats of conflict because Ukraine wants to join NATO. Maybe there's something more to it, but uh, this is a New York Times article. So if you want to go and check it out, obviously go to New York Times and do a search for Pentagon puts 8,500 troops on high alert amid Ukraine tensions. I hope everything just settles down. And nobody loses control of the situation, but only a few people are getting rich when these countries get taken over. I tell you, uh, plutocracy is, is a thing even here in the United States. So under smack talk, there's an article about Apple's 14 inch MacBook pro back in stock on sale for 18, 1850 bucks. Um, and that's kind of typical, um, Apple kind of throws that $150 off for a limited time thing. Um, I would say get a, get a MacBook air. Um, they're great and half the price roughly. No, they are half the price. Uh, this article is from Apple Insider. If you click the link, you'll get taken there. And you can read that article on your own um, at a later date. Obviously, you can go over there and check it out. Sign up um, at hometown.com, become a citizen, click those links, go over to the article uh, source, and then come on back and talk to me about it here in chat. And maybe we can have a really good conversation 
Um, happy to answer questions if you have them, if you're in my chat. Um, let me know if you hear that music. I've, I've got some um, pretty, pretty bass. Yeah, some pretty bassy music um, coming out of my speakers locally. It's supposed to be on the stream, but you may not be able to hear it over uh, me being loud. So if you are interested in getting a new uh, MacBook Pro, um, you can get one from Apple again. Um, here's something that is really interesting. The first mole molecular chip has been developed, realizing a 50 year old goal of integrating single molecules into circuits to achieve the ultimate scaling limits of Moore's law. If you've never heard of Moore's law, basically it was, um, um, an IBM, uh, administrator, uh, uh, researcher and, and, um, who came up with this, that every two years, the number of circuits, uh, integrated circuits, um, doubles and I'll click the link, but, uh, that's not what this article is about. It's basically about molecular electronics chips. And, um, I hope that this leads to more human computer interface devices, kind of like the, um, the cortical modem that, uh, who is it? I'll go on it. <laughs> My brain. Um, one second. Do, 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 do. I think it's Elon Musk, right? I know that it's a DARPA program, but the, um, the cortical modem is basically a, a device that allows human computer interface, um, directly from the brain, uh, and the rest of the body, uh, depending on w how the sensors get placed fascinating technology, but if we can get more human to computer, uh, or human to tech interfaces, then real honest cybernetics could be formed, um, which is the connection between and cybernetics actually has two different meanings and, um, which leads me to a really funny story. So well, years and years ago, no, let me, that I'll save it for another day anyway. Um, so if we can get real cybernetic, uh, connections, then we can attach mechanical arms that have the ability, uh, to not just be attached, um, to the remnants of a limb, but true connections to the nerves and, um, even blood flow could, could function, um, as part of the, the limb itself. Um, who knows, but getting, getting more see. So it says we've pre shrunk the sensor element to the molecular level to create a biosensor platform that combines an entirely new kind of real time, single molecule measurement with a long-term unlimited scaling roadmap for smaller, faster, and cheaper tests and instruments. Um, the then it goes from that type of tactical production to general strategic use. You, you integrate it into other things. Um, obviously this is for its particular, for a particular use. Um, but in time, you know, you get these tiny little uh, pieces of technology in place. And then hopefully somebody just comes out of the gate with something fantastic. Uh, but I've seen some of these prosthetic limbs do some amazing things. Um, little uh, like uh, controlling fingers. It's getting fine detail, um, stronger legs, um, basically like a platform so that you can actually um, attach different legs for different purposes. And sometimes they have shocks in them. Sometimes they are nothing more than 
um, a very elaborate, um, flexible um, leg uh, for running and stuff. And you can jump and it's once you get used to it, it's, I guess, pretty amazing. So um, on with the show. I want more tech. I want more capability. I want to be able to expand the human condition beyond our physical limitations and, and not be bound by um, our frail human bodies. We have the ability to heal and stuff like that to a remarkable degree, but um, there are a lot of people that have um, concerns, I guess you could say, where uh, cybernetics at a voluntary level might make their life better, but it is outrageously expensive. You know, 250,000 plus dollars for a leg. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, this last article is something that's kind of near and dear to me. Um, I have been, um, predicting for, I'd, well, for a long time, 20 plus years, I don't want to really say how old I am because in this tiny little picture that I'm looking at of me, um, I'm, I'm, um, I look a whole lot younger. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Um, at any rate, so this article is how labor and robots can coexist and that it's a new book. So it's over at New York Times. When you click the link, it'll take you there. And... Will robots really destroy the future of work? So I, this is an article from uh, an opinion piece from Peter Coy. And uh, some people on the political right love robots and hate labor unions. Some people on the political left are the opposite. They hate robots and love labor unions. Then there's David uh, Autour or Otter, Autour a labor economist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he loves both robots and unions. So I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I'm not going to read this whole thing uh, live. I will read it afterward because I've, like I said at the beginning of this, I don't prepare for this, but I can give you my perspective on these things and we can talk about it in chat if you are oh so motivated to uh, post a message, um, or you can come back after reading the article, which I would recommend to, um, obviously we can talk about it right now for a little bit, but I encourage you to follow the link from mobile, go read the article, come back, vote it up, vote it down, make a comment, come and chat with me, um, live in the next show, six o'clock Eastern. Um, I'm a, I'm going to keep on going every day, um, until I don't know when. Uh, we shall see. I might need a break at some point um, because work might pull me away a day in the next couple of weeks. We shall see. Um, I do work uh, full time still. Uh, at any rate, this article is going to be interesting because um, for decades now, I have been saying that automation is going to take jobs. And over the years, we have seen that happening more and more. Um, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. And what I describe to people is if you can sit down and write on a piece of paper, the steps that you take to do your job and that job does not require fine motor skills, right? So if you, if you can be honest about your job, and it comes down to um, anything that doesn't require fine motor skills. A robot can replace your job. Done and done. Whatever it is, um, a robot can take your job if you put it down into a series of steps. That algorithm is the job. Whatever it might be. And you can say, well, you know, I make all of these decisions all day long and, you know, I am important and whatever. But if your job can be put down into a series of steps, that means that 
I can program it into a bot. And let's say that you are doing things that require critical thinking. Well, a machine learning artificially intelligent program can do your job as well. All it needs is the information input into it. So if you run reports and assess those reports before making your decision, guess what you are doing? You are uh, an artificially intelligent machine learning program. You happen to be biological and uh, sentient, whereas a program is not yet. But if you can assess data, a computer can do it faster and arguably better. Programs are only as good as the programmers that program them. It's almost like pimp my ride. Um, I, I said that, well, anyway, um, so, and the idea here is if bots can take the job, then that can free us to do other things. Well, the problem is the only way that labor gets paid is if it's laborious. So what's going to happen when automation, um, dethrones the human condition in the workplace, we will have to have some way of paying people to basically exist. Um, and so I would suggest there is going to be a day who knows when I, and, and this is just something that I've been thinking about for years and years that instead of, um, a, a company owning the bots, it could be a person who owns the bot and they basically keep that bot functioning, doing that job that they would normally do, except that it's, it's me owning the bot and I get a revenue share to keep it going and to pay me. It makes zero sense in, in the sense that in a company can just buy a whole bunch of bots and program them to do the jobs. Um, but you're either going to have one person, uh, producing everything, <laughs> controlling everything and, and everybody else is sitting there fighting for scraps because nobody has a job unless it requires fine motor skills because we don't have robots that can do fine detail, um, to the degree that we can with our hands. We just have uh, some robots. Yes. Um, can one be purpose built? Yes. Um, to some degree, but there will be a time when the cost to automate a job outstrips the HR element of it. Uh, humans are just so expensive to the enterprise. Um, we get sick, we get tired, we get burnt out and we quit and randomly or all manner of thing, right? I have to go through title nine training every year, um, as if I need to be reminded to be a human being and not a complete tool to other people. Um, and you know, the people that need to watch title nine training aren't paying attention to it. Um, Anyway, I don't know why I said it like that, but it's, it, it comes down to when the overhead of managing a human being is too expensive, those people with the capability to automate will do exactly that. They'll fire the humans and put a bot in place. Go look at your supermarket. Every single supermarket now, eh, maybe not everyone, but most supermarkets now have a self checkout line where it's one person watching 12 registers. Um, and people are just walking up, swiping their stuff, paying and getting out. And there's fewer and fewer checkout counters with humans at the register. Why is that? Because we found out that we can do it ourselves. And that bot is sitting there with its ever watchful eye looking for barcodes. We don't need a human being to swipe products again and again and again. <laughs> um, 
And so bots are taking our jobs and it will continue to, to do that as time goes on. Um, all it takes is the, the people who have to realize that they don't need the human being. Um, but maybe we'll get more, uh, human support on sites like, um, YouTube and, uh, Twitch and other places that are highly automated. But when there's a problem, that automation just fails. You, you need some human fidelity in there. Um, but we'll, we'll see that wages and stuff like that will not be high for that kind of a job. Um, but at any rate, I think that's where I'm going to end today. Um, maybe tomorrow by tomorrow, I will have an artificially intelligent, um, machine learning bot. And, uh, that's who will be running this. Maybe it'll probably have more personality, right? I don't know. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, throw them in chat. And uh, let me know what you want to uh, see tomorrow. There's a bunch of articles that are always being populated on Ohm Town. So I'm going to go back to the very front. This is what it looked like an hour ago. Um, now we have all kinds of new stuff. Um, feel free to go over to hometown.com, click on the links. If you haven't signed up, go sign up. Um, I had been working on integrating a Twitch login on hometown, um, but there's a glitch in the matrix somewhere that's preventing this connection from taking place. Uh, but you'll soon be able to log into hometown using your Twitch credentials. And I'm going to continue to work on getting um, hometown gamification uh, processes integrated into the Twitch side so that um, if you are on Twitch or you are on hometown.com and doing things in either place, you are generating what is referred to as ohm, which is the currency for hometown. Um, and eventually that will lead to being able to um, acquire products or eliminate advertising for you or something. Um, I haven't quite finished all of that, but I'm working on it. And uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. Sound good? Hope to see you. Six o'clock Eastern. One hour. Bye-bye.